you are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. on Germantown Municipal Television. My name is Vince Perryman. I'm a local attorney with the Law Office of J. Vincent Perryman. Each month, Law Talk focuses on a wide range of legal issues and topics. Today's show, we'll be discussing business planning. With us now is attorney Jennifer Sisson. Jennifer, thanks for being with us. Yeah, no problem. So, you know, when we talk about business planning, it's kind of a broad topic because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, where do you normally begin with one of these? Well, I have clients come in and they request, you know, I want to do a limited liability company, an LLC. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine if they know what they want to do, but I usually like to back up and say, okay, tell me what your goal is what are, and what are your concerns. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people have read that you need to have a corporation or an LLC to protect yourself. And that is a big part of those types of organizations. But there's also other ways to address liability. Um, you have to consider the cost of creating those entities and the mm -hmm. tax issues that come along with it. So there's multiple things to consider when deciding how to set up your, your business. Um, so that's what I, I start with, their goals and, and their concerns, and then we go into what kind of business are you planning to set up? Are you starting a home business where you anticipate it being pretty small at the outset, or are you, you know, purchasing an existing business that's got 40 employees um, mm -hmm. and, you know, 200 contracts, which is a little bit different situation so so it, that's where I start yeah and it's one of those it's always kind of interesting how you'll have people that they've they've talked to Bob or Sally and they think oh well I need what Bob or Sally have and then you back them off and you're like well okay tell me the goal and mm -hmm. then do you have what, what's your sort of business plan and where do you see it going because um, those are always interesting questions to get into and ask. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it, when you're going through that with somebody as far as like just sort of talking them through their goals and the setup, uh, what all goes into that? Well, so there's a, a wide range of choices <clears throat> when it comes to setting up a business. Mm -hmm. um, so you can start on one end of the spectrum at, with a sole proprietorship. So if it's just you and you are making... Um, you know, cute little door hangers out of your house to sell to mm -hmm. people on Etsy. Um, a sole proprietorship may be what you want to do. You're basically um, just creating a business name for yourself, and there's no entity other, it's just you with mm -hmm. a name. Um, and then going along from that, you have a partnership, which is you and another person, but still fairly an informal agreement between the two of you of how, you know, who's going to paint the signs and who's going to attach the hangers. Mm -hmm. um, from there, you know, you get into um, limited liability companies, which there are also other more technical, you know, professional limited liability companies and um, limited liability partnerships and even limited partnerships. Um, so that is going to give you a level of protection from liability, mm -hmm. but still allows you a, a pretty decent amount of um, flexibility from a taxation point of view. You're still, there is an entity and you're creating it. You're gonna have to file stuff with the Secretary of State and you're gonna to have to maintain that registration, um, but you're not going to have to uh, do the same level of work as a corporation, which is kind of the other end of that spectrum of a incredibly organized uh, entity. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the, the thing with all of it is, is you've got this spectrum of just you as an individual doing business and then a C Corp or corporation that's got shareholders that you're liable to and a board and all this other stuff. Um, and with each one of those, there's different nuances to it as far as, uh, I guess, flexibility of being able to do business or making decisions. And then you've got different uh, state requirements and maybe different labor requirements depending on employees and things like that. It, it, as far as in working somebody through their goals, how do we, how do you start to look at all of that as to which, what would be best for them? 
Well, and typically the people that come that uh, are starting a business, mm -hmm. we're going to look at trying to keep it as simple as possible because I don't want to divert their income from their business into maintaining their business. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to grow their business and spend their time dealing with, with growing and doing what they're enjoying. Um, so if they come in and they say, um, I'm making door hangers on Etsy, mm -hmm. the concern for liability is really a small amount. So we look at maybe doing something more informal. If they come in and say, you know, um, I'm going to start a lawn business and include um, cleaning gutters or some kind of physical activity that's got a, an element of liability, then we might need to look closer at that issue. Um, and then there, there's always a taxation element, um, mm -hmm. whether you're going to pay taxes as an entity, if it's going to be a pass-through. Um, at that point, I, I always encourage my clients to contact a certified public accountant and um, have that person walk them through the tax issues because they need to understand, you know, which one works best for them. Um, something that comes up often as a kind of a, a side note that people don't realize, a limited liability company um, is charged franchise and excise tax by the state. Um, and depending on the kind of company you have, the assets that you hold and the amount of income you're going to generate, that could be a substantial tax burden. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something else. I, I send them to their CPA, ask them to understand that, run that, and so they understand before they set up the LLC that that's an expense they're going to have to address instead of yeah. coming to the end of the year and finding out you have a big tax bill. Well, and it's also interesting because sometimes we get people that they're selling things and they don't realize that they've got to uh, collect sales tax. Exactly. Yeah. Another side of things. I and, and I think it's always important because I always have, when people come in and they're asking me sort of questions, they, they look at me funny when I'm trying to say, well, you need to talk to so-and-so about this and that. And they're like, don't you know all of this? <laughs> you know, and, and it's the whole thing of reiterating that we, we all know, that lawyers are going to know the legal side of it. CPAs are going to know the tax side of it. And then there may be some other professionals with payroll or retirement type stuff in there mm -hmm. too. Um, and it's always kind of interesting how you've got, you know, I like to think of it as you've got these different silos as far as a tax silo, sort of a, just a regular business entity type silo and, um, you know, other liability silos and things like this. Um, and one of those shouldn't drive what you're doing um, specifically because sometimes you'll have somebody come in and they'll, they'll get hung up on the the tax perspective of this entity or that entity um, instead of thinking about what their ultimate goal is. Right. You know. And that's why I get, I, I want to make sure when I have somebody that comes in and says, I'm coming to see you to, because I want you to create this type of entity. Mm -hmm. um, and if they know, that's great. I, I'm glad that they have researched and they've decided. But I also like to take a minute and walk through that because sometimes that is a reactionary choice because of what they've heard from Bob and Sally. Mm -hmm. If I do this, it'll protect me. Um, and that may, it, there's some element of truth to that, but that also comes with a certain set of responsibilities. And so we need to not let one silo drive the boat. We need to make sure that we are looking at the bigger picture overall. Right, and that's a great place to take a break. So we'll continue our discussion about business planning when we come back. Please stay with us. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. So we were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom packed me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, 
Laura? I think I heard Laura. Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day I really hope I don't have another school. bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back. I'm Vince Perryman, and you're watching Law Talk. Joining us on our show is Attorney Jennifer Sisson, and we're discussing business planning. Jennifer, before the break, we were talking about all the different business entities that you could select as far as what you're doing business in. But, um, you know, some of it is just the nuts and bolts of where do you set up and uh, other things like that. So let's talk about that for a little while. Right. In today's environment, we're seeing more and more home-based businesses, which is great. People are being able to make an income um, when they have time and they're able to spend time with their kids and, and do other activities and, and work their job within the other things they're doing in their life. Um, when you decide to create a business and run it out of your home, you need to consider the uh, local ordinances of where your home is based. Mm -hmm. um, Germantown, for example, has a home-based businesses um, ordinance that talks about what you can and can't do. And the effort uh, with that is to balance um, your desire and, and want to run a business uh, out of your home to reduce overhead, but also to maintain um, the residential quality of your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, you want to be able to use your property the way you want to, but you also want your neighbor to respect your property as your home and not have people coming and going um, like a business. So that's something to consider and with different businesses that will factor in um, more so, you know, depending on what mm -hmm. you're doing. Some businesses from the outset need to get into a place, they need to have a uh, location that is outside of the home. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to start looking for a commercial piece of property or to rent or to purchase. Um, at that point, that's when you have to start doing some pretty um, serious thoughts about your business planning and your financial aspects of it. Because once you sign the lease, you're then committed for the term of the lease. So if you're not certain how well your business is going to do initially, mm -hmm. look for a short-term lease. Um, but certainly, as across the board, never sign anything unless you have read it and are fully aware and um, agreeable to all the terms, knowing that you're not going to be able to walk away from it just because things didn't go the way you anticipated. And that's, you know, that's life. We got to deal yeah. with things that we don't anticipate. And the one caveat too with that always that, you know, people don't think about it because in a lease, you may not know exactly what that commercial property is zoned for. That's true. And you want to make sure it's zoned for whatever business you're doing. Exactly. You know, and uh, another thing in thinking about zoning, because a lot of the stuff that I've set up in the past has been in Midtown and before the square blew up there, you know, parking was an issue. Right. Because you may buy something on Monroe there um, next to that lovely Putnam firm and you've only got two parking spaces, which isn't enough if you've got trying to get foot traffic. Right. Yeah. And you need to um, consider your signage that, that you want and how you want to represent your business and mm -hmm. get people to come. If you're looking for foot traffic, um, then, you know, maybe not, you shouldn't get a, a space in a high rise office building. Mm -hmm. um, some different, uh, you, you've got two different things in play. You've got the rules relative to the municipality that the property is located in. So the city of Memphis, uh, city of Germantown, town of Collierville potentially even um, the county, Shelby County. Mm -hmm. um, but then you also have private restrictions. So within a business park, the business park may have agreed to adopt a certain number of restrictions on what people can do and what people can um, use to advertise. So putting lighted signs that say open, um, that may or may not be allowed in a specific business park. So something to definitely consider and ask before signing a lease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because like for me, I want to make sure I'm in an office space in which I can do everything that Saul Goodman does on that TV show. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> including getting a pedicure and a, that, and a manicure. That's right. And drinking cucumber water. Yes. No, but the uh, it, it, these are just the little things that a lot of people, you, 
you don't really think about it because you're like, hey, I've got a product or I've got a service and this is what I do and this is what I know how to do. But it, then you get tripped up when you get some notice from the city or a municipality or the county. Right. Um, and you need to also, a lot of commercial leases, um, the rent is one thing. The rent is for the space itself. But there's also usually some kind of additional fee for overhead for the mm -hmm. common areas, particularly if you're in a, a office park, um, like a, a tall building um, mm -hmm. full of office spaces. They're going to have an additional fee for the elevators and the carpeting and the maintenance staff and the janitorial staff for for the common spaces in the area. So, yeah. um, so that's another thing. If, if you're going to immediately start out running it in a um, secondary location, you've really got to come up with a financial plan to factor into the cost um, of yeah. creating, you know, setting it all up. And the other thing that's always, I think, is interesting in those commercial leases when you're talking about common area and maintenance, uh, taxes and tax increases are included in that. So mm -hmm. if, the, if you're in the, when I never understand the real property taxes out there, but if you're in that moment where it may be reassessed and wind up with higher taxes, that's going to get passed on to you. So you've got to kind of anticipate that. Sure. Yeah. We've yeah. got um, reappraisal years from the Shelby County tax assessor every four years. And then um, every year the tax rate is set by the county commission and then the various municipalities. So um, you've got the the issue of whether the appraisal of the, the property, if it's increased in value, but then you also have if the county and city have decided that they need an increase in tax, um, in, in the tax rate to, to mm -hmm. create more income for the government to yeah. have. So, so yeah, two it, ways. And then too, you know, one of the other things that people don't think about is, is whether the cleaning is in there or, you know, the build out of the space. Right, yeah, especially it. new construction or mm -hmm. newer construction. Um, and even sometimes existing ones, you can um, build into the lease a type of uh, construction uh, budget and say, you know, as part of this, you're, the landlord will give you $5,000 or $1,000 or, or they'll provide a certain service for you, like the landlord agrees prior to you moving in to replace the um, carpet or paint the walls. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's important to, to factor that in as far as what you want your office to look like or the space that you've yeah, got. Yeah, and, and that, that the other thing when you talk about painting the carpet and the walls and all that is I, I've seen those where you have a lease and it says, all right, we're giving you this much or we'll do this, but it's, you know, sample A, B, or C right. that you get to pick. No premium carpets, no premium paint. So with that said, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk more about business planning with Jennifer Sisson. Thank you. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes, and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back. With us now is attorney Jennifer Sisson. We're talking about business planning. Jennifer, in the first segment, you know, we talked about business entities. In the second one, we talked a lot about leases or where you're going to do business uh, out of your home or uh, place of business. And then I think we haven't talked about uh, employees or licensing. Right. So, you know, 
we, we you figured out how you want to organize your business. You figure out where you want to do your business. Now the fun really begins. Yeah. Um, there's you know certain certain things that you're going to have to get um, sales tax. Well, I shouldn't say that because there's always exceptions to every rule. Mm -hmm. um, if you're operating a professional business, you need to have the professional license that you are required to have. So right. for us, we got to have our law license. Mm -hmm. um, if you are selling something and you need to remit sales taxes, then um, you might need to get a business license to be able to, to remit local sales taxes. Mm -hmm. um, you also need to apply for a federal employee identification number, an EIN, which will be like your business's social security number. You'll need that almost immediately because you need that to set up your um, bank accounts, mm -hmm. um, file your taxes, file your different um, you know, franchise and excess tax from what we discussed earlier. So those things usually can be done um, decently easily, you know, especially yeah. the, the EIN. You can uh, file for that online um, for the IRS, and they're, they're real quick to get you one. Then, right. <laughs> then, because once you get one, then you have the obligation to, to follow up and file the appropriate paperwork. And if you mm -hmm. don't, they will find you and ask you about that. Um, so then you decide your business is going to be big enough that you need another person to help you. So you've got to get an employee. Yep. So from there, you've got to figure out how you're going to pay your employee. And you, because I remember the first time I hired an employee, I'm mm -hmm. thinking I'm going to pay him $8 an hour. So eight times 20 hours a week, that's how much I'm going to end up having to pay. But that's not accurate. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I have to uh, deduct uh, Medicare, and, uh, FICA, that kind of stuff from his mm -hmm. check. But then also the employer has a duty to pay the employer's share of those things. So um, and again, that's when we bring in an, a CPA is very helpful to help get it started initially. There's also payroll companies. If you are a company that's going to start out with 20, 30, 40 employees, it may be cost effective for you to hire a company to manage that for you. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking during the break about employment, uh, unemployment yeah. uh, taxes. And so... It, well, yeah, the unemployment taxes are always really interesting on it because you think about it, you've got, if you have an employee, you're going to have to pay quarterly federal taxes. Right. And you're also going to have to pay potentially quarterly uh, state taxes, but it depends on how much they pay or, or they're paid. Um, and with that, with this, generally each quarter, each paycheck, you can figure on the federal side, um, there's about 7.5% on top of what you've paid them that you're going to have to pay in and you're going to have to withhold about seven and a half percent for the employees side on the the federal um, employment taxes but then you've got federal and state unemployment which is always referred to as FUDA and SUDA um, and these are it's a 940 is the the form on the federal side and uh, it, there's a certain cap on if you pay 7000 then you've got to pay X in. Um, now, the caveat with that is, is if you've created an entity in which you are paying yourself as a W-2, um, which is generally going to be an S-corp is the one that you do something like that in, um, then you are an exempt from paying unemployment taxes on yourself because you can't collect unemployment taxes from your own business. Right. So, And when we start talking about deductions from an employee's check, one of the bigger in deductions is insurance, health mm -hmm. insurance, which is a whole big expense yep. for a, especially a new company. It can be quite a, a lot of work to navigate and find a, a policy that fits your needs and the needs of your employee. So you, you know, consider that if you're going to hire full-time employees um, and making sure that you, if, if you don't want to offer benefits, you have um, made the appropriate restrictions on how you will use your employees, the number of hours you mm -hmm. need. Um, so it, especially as, as the business grows and you reach that tipping point of you really need a full-time employee, you got to consider that that means bringing them up to full-time means taking uh, some additional cost. Right. So, and the thing with that too is is being able to retain good employees. That's where the benefits are important. That's true. Um, and and the same with offering. You know, there's a minimum wage, but if you mm -hmm. can offer above that, then you know potentially you can get a better quality, uh, or or at least um, 
somebody that's more interested. They're, they know they are taking your job because your job is better for them than the job yeah. down the street. And, and I think the other important thing, because we've done a couple episodes on employees and those sort of laws, is if you're going to have employees, you need to have good policies in place. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> and that's, you know, as, as much as I spend time setting up businesses, that would be a time that I would encourage getting an attorney that really specializes in employment mm -hmm. law because that's a very specific area of law. Um, and getting, you know, a policy handbook. And once you, that, the, the thing I tell my clients a lot is once you create a policy, you got to follow it. Right. It's, it would be better to not have a policy than to have a policy that you don't follow. That's true. And the other thing, too, is just to remember there are certain laws that come into effect depending on the number of employees you have. Sure. As far as some Tennessee workplace and, and also some federal workplace protections. Um, so, you, you know, and that, that's the other sort of odd thing that we talk about is, is, you know, you have all these sort of worker bees on your team that are professionals, you know, CPAs, attorneys, things like that. Well, in this situation, you would bring in somebody that actually knows the HR or the um, uh, employment side of it, um, you know, because there's big firms that specialize in nothing but that. Mm -hmm. um, and that, because that's just a very nuanced Right. area there because um, so, and so yeah. so you gotta you have all of those people on your team including um, somebody that's going to help you navigate health insurance mm -hmm. and somebody who's going to help you navigate hazard insurance home uh, wouldn't be homeowners insurance but insurance for slip and fall liability mm -hmm. for if you are manage you know if you're renting a space something to protect your um, items your products that are in the space if this something happens to the space a tornado hits the space mm -hmm. if you own the space then something to, uh, some insurance to help you uh, address anything damaged to the space. If you've got uh, vehicles, you mm -hmm. have insurance to cover that and the employees covering that, and a policy to tell the employees you can't go joyriding in my <laughs> company car. Right. So, um, so it all kind of circles back into each other, but there's, starting a new business is exciting. A lot of people do it and they are very successful at it. We mm -hmm. just, I always want my clients to go into it with their eyes open. I want them to know that there are these things that we need to address because I don't want them to get caught off guard by a big, a big bill that they haven't anticipated. Yeah, and our time is up for this additional law talk, so I'd like to thank our guests for taking your time and being here out of our busy schedule and sharing your thoughts and insights with her. If you'd like more information about Law Talk or any other program on Germantown Municipal Television, please refer to our website at www.gmtvonline.org. Thank you for joining us today and be sure to join us next month for more legal topics. Until then, I'm Vince Perryman and thank you for watching.